So let's talk about instances and orgs and scratch orgs and sandboxes and all that stuff and what all that means and what the differences are. This is definitely um, an area that causes some confusion, especially as Salesforce begins to roll out new kinds of great DevOps stuff. So like many other cloud providers, Salesforce has a number of different servers in a number of different regions, um, not just to help them uh, scale out their compute power, but to also help with uh, compliance needs, you know, North American instances, European instances, um, and instances in different countries and regions. So when we think of an instance, we're really thinking about these centers for computing. And so when they say, what instance are you on, you might notice um, if you don't have a domain set up on your Salesforce org, you're going to have something like NA17 or something like that in your URL. Um, when after you log in. Those are production instances. Um, and so you could think of it as an instance broken into regions. So if you had, let's, let's say you have, um, you know, this would be North America, right? And you're going to have a number of instances in, in North America and they're all going to be named NA something or other, usually a number afterwards. So, your North American instances is going to have a number of production instances that contain NA in them. What you can also do in Salesforce is you can get your own domain so that when you're looking at it, it says, you know, my company uh, .force.com uh, instead of NA17 or something like that. Um, and that just gives you a little, a little, you know, section, a little area inside that your NA instance that's just special for you. It's really just a label. Um, to help you control some, some other things. It's helpful for me uh, as a consultant because I'm logging into so many different Salesforce orgs at the same time. It used to be I couldn't be in two NA17 orgs at the same time that were on the NA17 instance because once you log into one, it actually will boot you out of the other. But the domain actually allows you to have be logged into both at the same time. So it gives you further segmentation um, within your instance for your org. Each org is going to have its own org ID, uh, which you can find uh, when you go to setup. You can actually look at your company info and you're going to find your organization ID. It's just like any other Salesforce ID. It's an 18 digit, or 18 character, I should say, code. And you're also going to have a number of sandbox instances. So North America is going to have some sandbox instances. And again, just like the production ones, each instance will have many, many orgs. Okay, you're going to share this instance with many, many other businesses who are using the same infrastructure that you are. It's shared. It's a multi-tenant environment. And that means is that with Salesforce, you're getting a number of sandboxes. You're getting developer sandboxes, and you're getting usually one free partial copy sandbox. And these are what we think of as our environments within our org. Your sandbox, your little piece in, the, in here, is related to your production instance. It's cut from it, right? It's a copy of it uh, from the metadata of it. If you have a partial copy sandbox, all it says is we're going to take some of the data from your production and based on a template that you create, we're going to pull some of that data down uh, into the partial copy sandbox so you have something to play with. Now, we also have something called a dev org. And a dev org, well, I'm going to kind of move over here for these. A dev org is really uh, for developers to play around in. These are free. You can register for a dev org. You put your name in. You fill out a basic landing page form, and boom, you have a dev org. Uh, you actually log into dev orgs the same way you log in to production orgs. You're going to login.salesforce.com, and that gets you into your dev org or your production org. When you log into a sandbox, you're going to go to test.salesforce.com to log into your sandbox. If you're doing a perfect copy from production, you're not adding any more users. Um, you're just using the users that you had in production. Your username and, and password will be the same with one exception. The username will have dot and then the name of the sandbox at the end. So for me, it would be re at leadsource.com dot my sandbox or dot test or dot QA or dot dev or whatever we happen to name our sandbox. Um, and then my password will be the same and I can log in. You can add more users to a sandbox environment after the fact and they don't have to follow that rule set. 
So I jumped around a little bit there. I'm gonna jump back to the dev orgs for a minute. These are great if you're, if you're experimenting with features, you wanna create an app on the App Exchange, you can create managed packages there. Uh, there are newer ways to do this now using dev hubs, which are enterprise orgs that allow you to create uh, what are called scratch orgs. And scratch orgs are Salesforce's kind of new era org. Um, that you can build, they are temporary. You build them and, and within seven to 30 days or somewhere in there, by default, I believe it's seven, but you can specify up to 30 days for them to expire. Um, and you kind of think of them as a local environment. It's like bringing Salesforce to your computer, even though it isn't, um, it gives you something to work with. It's a very raw environment and you can, you can actually specify the components that are gonna show up in a dev org, what features you want turned on, which Salesforce configs you're gonna use and you can use those actually to build as well. So dev, and then you have scratch. And like I said, dev is login. Scratch also is test.salesforce.org, like a sandbox. So scratch orgs are thought of almost, um, from a, at least from the login side, they're thought of as sandboxes. They're a little, um, Faster, a little more configurable than a sandbox. Sandbox is nice when you want to get a full copy of production. Scratch is good when you just need a, a much smaller piece that just gives you the stuff that you're working on. If you're working on one feature in one area, you don't need a full copy necessarily of your production environment. Um, and it also allows you to do better uh, source-driven development, which is when your code sits on Git and that becomes the source versus the sandbox being the source of code that gets pushed to production. So that's kind of how you break those down. If you're a partner, this is a little more edge for those of you looking to become an ISV partner. Um, we have things like those template source orgs. Um, this is for ISV partners really. This allows you to spin up uh, orgs based on a template. A little, almost in some ways like a scratch org. Scratch org is a little more developer focus, a template org is more like, uh, I take an org, I specify it as a, as a template source org and say, all right, all the data and all the things that are installed and configured in this org as they are today, I'm going to just take a snapshot of this, save it as a template, and then later I'm going to say, oh, I quickly need to do a demo for a client I want to give them an org for 30 days. I'm going to spin up uh, a copy of that template that I took at any time. I can say, okay, Salesforce, go create me a fresh org that looks like that template. And it will spin it up with everything uh, as if it were created on the day the snapshot was created of that template. And you can create many, many templates um, using your template source org. Um, and then it allows you to do all kinds of things like create demo environments for, for your customers. Um, any questions on this? So if you have to compare scratch org with sandbox, would you call it a partial or full sandbox? It's, um, I would call it a sandbox is like a scratch org that has been predefined. Okay. So the parameters for the definition of a sandbox is production, right? Whereas scratch orgs have to be told what to look like. They don't assume anything really. They may have some defaults, but they don't really assume anything. The sandbox just says, yeah, just tell me what I'm copying. It's just a copy of production. There's one caveat to this. Salesforce has, in, um, I think in the past year, come out with the ability to actually take a sandbox from a sandbox. It, basically, you can change the source of copy, but a sandbox is always a copy of another org to start off with. Yes, you can manipulate it after that. You can totally change it. Um, but it is kind of inherently, it's, it's connected to your production org. A scratch org is really, it's totally individual environment. Any final thoughts? Um, well, I would say that it's good to understand your instance. Um, understanding what an instance is just so that when you're talking to your Salesforce account execs, um, account managers, they, um, if some, or, or even Salesforce support, and they say, well, what instance are you on? It's good to be able to know what instance you're on. Um, you can look in your, the URL. If, if it doesn't show you the instance because you have a domain, um, you can actually go to um, trust.salesforce.com. You can actually put your domain in and it will tell you what instance you're on. 
Um, the other things you can do is look at the status of instances for downtime, uh, scheduled maintenance, um, what version of Salesforce has been released. Did they get the winter 2020 release yet? Did they not? Um, so you can see all those things on trust.salesforce.com. Uh, when someone in your company is reporting, hey, we're all having Salesforce issues today, go there first. It, you might actually see something that says, known issue, we're working on it, you know, some kind of window of expected time. And I think it's just generally uh, good to be able to use the same terms as the people at Salesforce. You can speak more intelligently to your account managers, to your support reps, uh, to help you navigate uh, across the board.